Okay, hello everyone and welcome to another edition of The Daily Crow. I'm Chris Phillips of the Spurs Up Show coming to you live. Obviously going to talk about the big news that dropped late last night and everyone's been talking about today. Um, Tavian Feaster chooses the Gamecocks over Virginia Tech, the Clemson transfer running back. Going to get into just my opinions on it, how he fits in the Gamecocks scheme, and really the question everybody's been asking, how is it going to impact the 2019 season? I know that's something everybody wants to talk about. Does it give the Gamecocks a higher ceiling, give them a higher win total? So I want to give my opinions. I know I already gave my record predictions and kind of give my updates with the Tavian Feaster news, how that shakes out. So before I get into everything, this is a broadcast to you by our friends over at SeatGeek. Gamecocks football season, we're just 33 days away. It is slowly getting here. You're going to need your Gamecocks football tickets, even if you're not going to a South Carolina football game. For whatever reason, if you need your tickets to any South Carolina Gamecocks, sporting events, NFL, NBA, NHL, MLB, Concerts, comedy club events, doesn't have to be sports, you name it. Our friends over at SeatGeek, go download the SeatGeek app or go to SeatGeek.com. Use the promo code SPURSUP to save $10 off your first purchase. They've actually made, they actually got a ticket rating system. They make it super easy for you. They've got a ticket rating system which rates the ticket for you so you know if you're getting a really, really good deal. You know if you're getting a steal. So again, I implore to you, if you are getting Gamecock Super Bowl tickets, use the promo code SPURSUP over our friends at SeatGeek. Save some money in the process. Those tickets are not cheap. Um, so again, go download SeatGeek, go to SeatGeek.com. We appreciate those guys. And again, remember to use that promo code SPURSUP. That spurs up to save 10 bucks off your first purchase. All right, let's get into it. So Tavian Feaster, obviously last night, it's funny, I released the podcast or recorded the podcast, set it for pending about an hour later, the Tavian Feaster news dropped. So unfortunately, wasn't able to actually talk about it on the podcast, if you will, as up to date as last night with the news that Tavian Feaster is officially a Gamecock. The courtship is finally over. We finally know now uh, the Gamecocks have added another running back and a really, I would say, a very high quality running back to the running back room for the Gamecocks. For me, I think he fits in very well for the offensive scheme. Just talking about that, he's a big bodied guy who's extremely fast. I think he's automatically, when he steps on campus, the best breakaway threat the Gamecocks have. I think he fits into the the mold as well of a, of a guy that if it's third and short, fourth and short, it's a guy who can get a yard, who can get inches for you. Just who can be that guy, who can be that all-around back for you. Obviously, everyone's been talking about, you know, it's funny that people that have talked about it's going to be a competition that, you know, I hope Rico Dowdle can beat him out or there's no guarantee that Feaster, you know, it's going to be a... And listen, it's going to be a competition. When Muschamp and company were recruiting this kid, I promise you, they're not making empty promises or just making promises to the kid that, hey, you're going to come in, you don't have to work, you're going to be the automatic starter. But... Let me put it to you this way, guys. Tavian Feaster did not transfer to South Carolina to sit the bench. And he didn't transfer to South Carolina to be the number two running back. So, and, you know, I know we don't want to hurt the other guys' feelings, the other guys on the roster, but Tavian Feaster, I think, came here for a purpose. He's going to be your number one running back. I would be shocked if Tavian Feaster's not the starting running back against UNC. That's just my opinion. Obviously, we'll see how things shake out. They will battle for it through fall camp. I think it will be Rico Dowdle and Tavian Feaster battling for that one spot. But I think overall, again, a guy like Tavian Feaster, Will Muschamp probably told him, hey, we're not guaranteeing you the starting job, but you have a great opportunity here to secure it. And again, I just don't think a guy like that's transferring to South Carolina if he doesn't think, hey, I'm going to win this starting job. So for the people talking about that, hey, they're going to split carries or maybe he won't be the starter, I'm just not buying it. I think Tavian Feaster, the day he steps on campus, is the best running back that South Carolina has available, no doubt. Um, for me, everybody's been talking about what are the expectations for him? You know, realistic expectations for Tavian Feaster. The numbers that jump out to me automatically, honestly, 700 plus rushing yards and seven or more touchdowns. To me, those feel like good numbers because, again, the Gamecocks are going to use Rico Dowdle. They're going to use Mon Denson, A.J. Turner, Kevin Harris, uh, Deshaun Fenwick, Levante Valentine, all the other guys. They're going to use all those other running backs, no doubt. But, uh, I, I think for Feaster, a guy who, again, I fully expect to be the number one running back, over 700 yards, over seven touchdowns. You make a good point. He, set, he ranks second in Clemson history in yards per carry. I think it's just under six yards per carry. So, again, a guy who can do it all for you. You can also catch out of the backfield, although he didn't do that a bunch at Clemson. Um, you know, I, I think those are fair numbers for him. I don't know that he's going to come in and be some 1,000-yard running uh, thousand yard rusher or some 1,000-yard running back or rush for 15 touchdowns, but... I think 700 or more yards, seven plus touchdowns, I think is a realistic number and a, a real goal that he can hit this year. Um, to me, the one there, or the one thing that people aren't talking about, which I think is very interesting of what this news means for South Carolina, I kind of think, honestly, I, I really do believe that with Tavian Feaster's transfer to South Carolina, 
I think it puts more pressure on Jake Bentley to have success this year. And not in a bad way necessarily. It's not like a you're going to lose your job type of way. But I've talked about, we've talked about, everyone's talked about before that with Jake Bentley, the biggest thing is he doesn't have a running game. For all the criticism he gets, for all the criticism I've given him, you have to acknowledge the fact he's never had a stable running game behind him. He's got that back now. Unless there's something we don't know about Feaster, or Feaster doesn't pan out, he has that guy now. So I think a lot of Gamecock fans are going to look at Jake Bentley and say, there's no excuse. You need to ball out this year. You need to have a really good year. And I think that pressure was already there necessarily, but I think it amps up to a new level now that, again, Jake Bentley's got his running back in the backfield. Jake Bentley's got his guy he can depend on on third and short, fourth and short. Jake Bentley's got his guy that can get a couple of yards on first down. It's not going to be all on his shoulders anymore. At least it shouldn't. Obviously, there's other things that go into it with the offensive line, which I agree 100%. People have been talking about the offensive line that I've already broken, or you know, I've already broke down that position unit already. But and I feel good about it. But they have to play well as well to open up the holes. But either way, Tavian Feast are going to be the best option. I think it puts more pressure on Jake Bentley to play really well and have a breakout season because again. You're not going to be able to use the crutch of, oh, he doesn't have a running game, or he doesn't have a capable running back, or his running backs are always injured, knock on wood, that they, they stay healthy. Um, so I actually think kind of it, it puts more pressure on Jake Bentley to perform well this season. All right, so let's get to the thing everybody's been asking me. Does it change your season prediction? Does this change the outlook of Gamecock football for 2019? Is South Carolina all of a sudden going to win the SEC East? Are they all of a sudden going to win 9, 10 games? You know, for me, I, obviously it changes the dynamic of the offense. It changes the dynamic of the running back room, no doubt. For me, I would say I'm going to stick with my prediction of 7-5. and five. I'm going to stick with my 7-5 and five prediction. Um, I think where it certainly helps South Carolina, you talk about the swing games the Gamecocks have on their schedule. Um, you talk about at Texas A&M. You talk about at Tennessee, which is a game I have South Carolina losing. You talk about at Missouri, which I've talked about Mizzou and Tennessee. I think the Gamecocks will split those two games. Um, you talk about the Florida game. I think there are swing games in there that, I mean, listen, the, the I don't have the official stat pulled up, but the record when South Carolina runs for over 100 yards under Will Muschamp is insane. They were 6-0 and a year ago when they ran for over 100 yards. Um, it's some ridiculous winning percentage. And I'd love to see that stat for all of Gamecock football history because I, like I feel like every South Carolina team that's been able to run the football well is a good team. I mean, it's just plain and simple. So, um it's obviously going to change in that in that way, but to me right now, I'm still comfortable with sticking with 7-5. and five. But the one thing I will say about the Tavian Feaster edition, I think it raises the ceiling for what the 2019 season could be. Because again, I'm sort of still in wait-and-see mode. I'm very optimistic and excited and feel good about Feaster, but I want to see how he fits in this offense. I want to see the offensive line open some holes for him. You know, I want to see certain things happen and pan out before I predict that this dude's going to break off and be some first-team All-SEC type of guy. But I certainly think it raises the ceiling in the sense that if this dude pans out, and if this dude is what we think he can be, then the Gamecocks just went from a ceiling of maybe eight or nine wins to the ceiling jumping up to a nine-win season. And I don't want to be unrealistic, but, I mean, maybe the ceiling is a ten-win season. I, I, that sounds crazy to say. I don't want to say that, and I'm certainly not predicting it. I'm predicting a 7-5 and five record. But I think it just raises the overall ceiling that if the South Carolina Gamecocks can have a consistent running game with Tavian Feaster in the backfield, again, I, I think it, it, this, this season could be much, much better than anticipated. Again, a lot of things have to work out with the offensive line. Jake Bentley still needs to play well, the wide receivers. It's a complete unit. But the Gamecocks, for the first time since 2014 when they had Mike Davis, have a dependable option at running back, and I couldn't be more excited because again, this is something this team's been lacking. You, you can only expect to, you can only expect it to help Jake Bentley to help this offense. Um, do I expect him to be worse, as good, or better than Mike Davis? That's a good question. I think he's going to be at least as good as Mike Davis. I'll give you that. I don't know if he'll be better than Mike Davis. Mike Davis also had a couple of years body of work that Tavian Feaster does not. But uh, I, I certainly think he could be that type of back for the Gamecocks. I think he can make this offense change this offense, really, and change the season outlook in the sense that, again, I'm sticking with my 7-5 and five prediction, but maybe he does help South Carolina steal a win. Maybe he does help South Carolina upset a few more teams or go to 9-3. and three. I mean, I don't know. We'll have to see um, how he, again, he's got to pan out on the field, um, but we'll see. Who takes snap number one of the year at running back? It's Feaster. To me, it's just a no-brainer. It's just a no-brainer. I mean, listen, the guy didn't transfer to South Carolina to sit the bench. The guy did not transfer to, and I, 
with all due respect to Rico Dowdle, because I talked about a couple weeks ago on the position of preview for running backs, that Rico Dowdle's a guy that if he's healthy, um, you know, if he's healthy, that he can be the guy. Could he return to that freshman year form? But he's just simply been inconsistent, man. And you can't keep waiting for a guy like that to pan out. It's a win now mentality. Will Muschamp talks about it all the time. And I think it's going to be very evident in fall camp. And I'm very interested to see the reaction and the kind of the dynamic in the running back room now between Dowdle and Denson and Turner, these seniors. I mean, I, you have to imagine it's a business, right? You're going to bring in the best guy who's going to play and the best guy is going to give you the chance to win football games. But it is a business, and I'm sure I'm sure it'll be a heated competition, but it's a competition I fully expect Tavian Feaster to win, and I fully expect him to get snap number one in a ton of snaps. Somebody asked how many carries. 15 to 20, I wouldn't doubt it. 15 to 20 carries against UNC, and somebody also asked about the offensive line. I mean, certainly, when you have a bat that can make guys miss and burst through a hole and break away at the second level, it's going to make everybody look better. And the Gamecocks just simply have not had that. So, again... That's my take on the Tavian Feaster situation. Again, I, I, I'm sticking with my 7-5 and five prediction, but I, I really do think that it raises the ceiling. The overall ceiling for this season just got bumped up. I, 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 uh, my good buddy Brad Crawford tweeted out yesterday, I don't see a situation now where South Carolina misses a bowl game. I simply don't see that at all because I think the Gamecocks will be solid enough on offense to win a couple of games. Uh, the floor for me for this season, like I just said, I think now with Feaster, I think it's a 6-6 six and six floor. Obviously, when you're talking about the floor, I'm assuming everyone's still healthy. I mean, it, it could, you know, knock on wood again. Anything's possible with injuries and things of that nature. But with this current team, if this team stays the way it is, everyone's healthy. I think the floor is a 6-6 six and six year, which is why I've got the Gamecocks 7-5 and five, somewhere in the middle. But I certainly think getting to nine wins now is not something that's unrealistic like maybe we once thought it was a couple months ago. So that's going to do it for me. Again, appreciate you guys tuning in. Obviously, I'm very, very excited about the whole Feaster thing. I just... I'm excited, man. It's it's finally the Gamecocks. Finally, they have a running back that when I, they hand the ball to on third and one or fourth and short, we won't be scared for our lives that South Carolina is not going to get it. So appreciate you guys tuning in. If you haven't done so, the Spurs Up Show episode 116 um, dropped uh, yesterday with Brandon Wallace. Had a phenomenal conversation with him. Um, please go listen. Obviously, fantastic episode. Brandon's such a cool dude. I have a ton of a ton of new content coming out this week, including position unit previews continuing tomorrow and Thursday as well as another episode of the Spurs Up Show. So appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much.